What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorials video. We're doing lesson number two, where we're gonna show you guys how to make the LED on our own Elegoo R3 Uno. We're gonna show you guys how to make it blink. As you guys can see, it's already blinking. I'm going to be altering it a little bit. You guys are gonna see, it's pretty cool. Just changing some variables in the code can make the blink rate change. So very cool stuff we're gonna get into today. Of course, everything is in our PDF complete starter guide uh, instruction set. So don't worry, follow along with this video if you'd like. Tutorial is gonna be pretty easy, but there's a lot to learn about how this system works. So make sure you guys stay tuned until the end of the video so you don't miss out on any of this important information. As always, if you guys are brand new, make sure you guys smash the like button, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think, how it can improve, what type of videos you guys want me to make for you in the future, all that. I'm totally open to your constructive criticism. But without further ado, let's get started with today's video. So, first things first, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. So, the only thing we really need is the Elegoo Uno R3 for this part of the uh, tutorial. In the next lesson, we're going to get the breadboard out with some resistors, some LEDs. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait for the next lesson. But in today's video, we're just showing how to deploy the code to the Elegoo to the controller to make it change the LED. So, without further ado, let's jump into this. Principle, the Uno R3 board has rows of connectors along both sides that are used to connect to several electronic devices and plugins, shields that extend the capability. It also has a single LED that you can control from the sketches. This LED is built onto the Uno R3 board and is often referred to as the LLED. So as you guys can see, if you take a look, boom, it's called the L. LED because it's labeled L right there. Pretty cool. So let's jump into this. You may find uh, that your Uno R3 board L LED already blinks, as I showed you guys. Yes, it does already blink, right? Just to confirm, look at that. Bump, 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 bump. So it is blinking. And that's because it is shipped with the blink sketch pre installed. In this lesson, we're going to reprogram the Uno 3. The Uno R3 board with our own blink sketch, which will change the rate at which it blinks. Cool. In lesson zero, which we just finished, if you guys watched that, we set up the IDE, we set everything up so that we're ready to rumble. And this includes the sketch for the LLED. Very cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to load the blink sketch that you find in the IDEs menu under File, Examples, Basic, and blink there it is very cool so here is our blink code and as you guys can see pretty simple pretty simple stuff one line to initialize everything and then the loop of course just keeps looping 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 completing a task reading sensor data whatever this is where all that code is going to go all right uh, when the sketch window opens enlarge it we did that okay this example sketch includes uh, it's read only so we can't change this code so what we need to do is we need to save our own file, save as, and name it my blink. So save as. We're going to delete this one. I recorded this video, but for some reason there was a terrible echo, so I just had to redo it. So my blink, boom, save it. And we can close this one because we have our my blink open now. Awesome. So here we go. This will be our blink code. As you can see, it's connecting. All right, boom. Once you have saved your copy of my blink, this means if you ever want to find it again, you can just open file, sketchbook, and there it is, my blink. Very cool, very cool. All right, so let's see. Attach your Arduino board to the computer with the USB cable and check that my board and serial port are correct. We are now connected and everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Awesome. Okay, note that the board, blah, blah. Okay, you got to change it. If you're not using the R3, everything will show up differently. Okay, that's cool. Okay. 
Click the upload button, the second button from the top. If you watch the status area IDE, you can see it's compiling, you get this, status changes upload. At this point, LEDs on the Arduino, Arduino should start to flicker as the sketch is transferred. Okay, cool. So, let's do this. We're going to click upload. I'll do it once on here so you can see what it looks like. Boom. Done compiling. Cool. Now let's do it on this view so you can see what it's supposed to look like. Let's see. So I'm going to press upload right now. Three, two, one, boom. As you can see, flicka, 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 boom. It's loaded. Now it's pulsing. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, finally, this, it should say done. The other messages, blah, blah, blah. blah. And so this sketch takes up 928 bytes, and we have 32,256 bytes available. It's very cool. So we can store quite a lot on this device. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You can get an error, and this error would mean that it's just not collected, uh, connected properly. If you run into that problem, shoot me a message, shoot me a DM, doesn't matter. Hit me up. I'll try to help you as much as possible. Okay, note that a huge part of this sketch is composed of comments. They're not actual program instructions. Now, comments are these. Anything, so in C++, anything that has this format, this is for a block of comments. You can put as many comments as you want. Totally ignored. Or you can do, just like you see right there, Below the double slash, this is for a line comment. If you indent, this stuff will be recognized. So you just use them whenever you need them. Very cool. Just like Python. If you saw our introductory to Python tutorial or the intermediate Python tutorial, we went over comments. Pretty much the same concept. You just use a different symbol in C++. So anyways, uh, scrolling on down. The first block of code, void setup, blah, 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 blah. Every Arduino sketch must have a setup function. That's this one right here. A place where you might want to add instructions of your own is in between the two block, the squiggly marks. So the curly brackets, everything inside of here is considered part of the code of this function right here. So kind of like in Python, except in C++, we need to use curly brackets to denote the block of code. In Python, everything is based on indentation. So a little bit different. Not really difficult, it's just another thing to remember. You gotta put the curly brackets. Another thing that's different about C versus Python, you gotta put the semicolon after every single line, pretty much. So it's just a little different, not much different, but you know, it's different. Basically, logic is all the same. The only thing that changes is syntax. So that's why you start learning one language. Once you start learning different languages, you're going to realize them. it's all the same for the most part. There's just little differences. Once you take a programming paradigms class, you're going to learn which programming language to use and which scenario for the best optimization. Super cool. All right. So in this case, there's just one command, which as the comment states, tell the Arduino board that we're going to use the LED pin as the output. It's also mandatory for the sketch to have a loop function. Unlike the setup function that only runs once, after a reset, the loop function will, after it is finished running its command, immediately start again. Like we were saying, the loop function just runs over and over and over and over and over again forever until it gets a command to stop or we turn it off. It's one of those two. So inside the loop function, the commands first of all turn the LED pin on high, then delay for 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second, then turns the LED pin off and pauses for another second. Very cool. So this high just means turn on. Low means turn off. Delay, wait. That's it. Pretty simple. So to, the delay period is a millisecond. So if you want the LED to blink twice as fast, all you have to do is change the value from 1,000 to 500. This was, and then pause for half a second each delay rather than a whole second. Very cool. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. What we're going to do is we're going to change this from 1,000 to 500, and same with this one. Boom, let's save it, and now let's switch our view over to the device so you guys can see what's gonna happen after I press upload. Boom, it's uploading the sketch. 
Boom. And as you guys can see, it's not blinking twice as fast. Pretty cool. What we should try now, so let's make it wait a long time. Let's do five seconds. Save it. Pop back over. Now I'm uploading. Flicker, flicker, flicker. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, last thing I want to try really quick. But, you know, you can sit here all day playing with this. Let's do this. Let's just comment this out. Comment this out. Comment this out. Because what I want to do, and let's save it. Oh, control save. Come back over. I want to see if this will work, if it'll just keep the light on. Boom. Cool. Flicker, flicker. Boom. And look at that. It's keeping the light on. Very cool. Okay, I lied. I want to try one more thing. What I want to try to do is just take this line of code. Let's copy it. Let's put it in here. Because, you know, it kind of doesn't make sense to keep it looping, turning it on, turning it on, because it's already on. So let's see if we could just set it up. Boom. Start with the light on. Let's see if that works. Boom. So here it is. We're going to upload the code. Boom. Uploading. Go. Oh, oh, very cool. It works. It works. Very cool. So you really don't even need to put anything in this loop unless you're going to be doing changing things like this. So very cool. That's really all I have for you guys today. This lesson was super easy. In the next lesson, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. And we're going to actually start with the electronic components. I can't wait for this. This is going to be the fun part. This is when we really start to get into the nitty gritty. Getting the breadboard out. We're going to be messing with resistors, wire jumper wires. LEDs. This is going to be a lot of fun. If you guys like this video, you like what you're learning, make sure to smash the like button, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be completing this entire series with you guys from the safety and comfort of our own home. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.